Bouchon was among those who voted to certify the results after initially considering voting against them. Four Indiana Republicans, though, did vote against certification in some of the swing states, including Congressman Jim Banks, who we spoke with earlier. I, in the week. I believe Wednesday is a huge step toward ensuring that, the, uh, that, uh, that we return the integrity and, and preserve the integrity of our election system and tell those states who unconstitutionally conducted their elections that there is a there, if there is a price to pay and the American people um, are watching in hopes that their state legislatures go back and and uh, review how their, their elections were conducted. Now, Wednesday night, Banks did issue a statement condemning the violence, hours later voting against the certification. Meantime, Senator Mike Braun, he changed course, saying Wednesday's events changed things dramatically. He said, though, I will continue to push for a thorough investigation into election regularities. Many Hoosiers are concerned. As my objection was intended, I've withdrawn that objection and will vote to get this ugly day behind us. We spoke about that with Braun's predecessor, former Senator Joe Donnelly, who also had a lot to say about the president's role in all this. Uh, what were your thoughts as we witnessed that all unfold? Number one, it was heartbreaking and crushing for everybody from Indiana and from our country. But to be honest with you, um, the, the attack was not um, unexpected to me. I thought that something like that might happen. I was surprised that the Capitol Police were not able to stop them. But um, President Trump a few weeks ago tweeted, come January 6th, it's going to be wild that day. Um, yesterday morning, he spoke to the entire group uh, at the White House and told them that they needed to be strong. Rudy Giuliano, Rudy Giuliani came out and said it's trial by combat. And then the president told them all to head down to the Capitol. And inside the Capitol, we had people like uh, Senator Braun who were trying to overturn the election. And so um, it was not, it was not uh, a surprise that they were there or that they attacked the Capitol. The surprise was that they were able to get in. You mentioned Senator Braun. You've been critical of him. He ultimately decided not to vote against the certification. Uh, what were your thoughts on his move to essentially uh, walk that back after what happened? I'm glad it finally happened, but he was part of the team that helped create this entire event. Um, he put his loyalty to Donald Trump ahead of his obligation to the people of Indiana and the Constitution of the United States. This was all caused by uh, Donald Trump, his incitement of the crowd and the, uh, the action of the legislators who were trying to, to negate the, uh, the certified election results of the United States of America for president. Um, I think there's a real question as to whether the president should continue at this point. He is responsible for an insurrection against the capital of the United States. I, those are words I never dreamed I or anybody else would ever speak. And so I'm really, really concerned about his behavior in his mental state, to be honest with you. And we need to protect this nation. Do you think the 25th Amendment is in play or is that unrealistic? I actually think it's being talked about. There are some reports of that. Uh, do, do you favor such a move? At this point, I do. I have not the entire time of President Trump's uh, presidency. I don't take things like that lightly. But we've never had a president who incited an attack against our capital. Former Senator Joe Donnelly there. Meantime, Governor Eric Holcomb also weighing in on the events of this past week. He spoke with our Kayla Sullivan on Thursday. You guys did this to us. They don't get to steal it from us. Shots are being fired Everybody inside the Capitol now. chamber. As this unfolded in our nation's capital, Governor Eric Holcomb was inside the Indiana State House addressing Hoosiers during his weekly COVID-19 press conference. He was unaware of what was happening at the time. As I uh, was being briefed right as I literally was walking back to the office, started to settle into me just how not just frightened folks must have been um, there, but the disgust that goes along with that. Feeling saddened and sickened, Governor Eric Holcomb says it's time for leaders to step up. I would hope that everyone, myself included, um, finds it in themselves to try to be part of the solution going forward. I asked the governor if he wishes he would have said more before the riots to ease tension about the results of the election and if he thought silence by leaders enabled the behavior. Honestly, Kayla, I'm not trying to avoid your question. I just don't, I, I don't get into 
pointing and picking different examples of he said, she said, and I blame this person. And The governor said he does support the right to peacefully assemble, rally, and protest, and that those who turned violent should be punished. The folks that broke the law should be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. And when it comes to why the people gathered in D.C., the governor said there are other ways to go about getting answers. If folks are serious about, and I'm not one of them, but if folks are serious about uh, thinking that these elections weren't um, on the up and up, then they need to look at those in those states. We'll see what we'll see the follow up, the thoughtful follow up from now going forward. When asked about the state of the Republican Party, Governor Eric Holcomb says being an Indiana Republican is the jersey he wears, but he is the governor of all people. He says it does not determine what is right and wrong. His internal compass does that. For more statements, you can head to our website. Reporting from the Indiana State House, I'm Kayla Sullivan. Kayla, thanks. The governor being sworn in for his second term in office this week. In the meantime, lawmakers are back at the State House for this year's session with party leaders unveiling their agendas for the coming year and a lot of issues that deal with the impact of this ongoing pandemic. And we really got some key priorities we're going to focus on. One is we're going to obviously have a balanced budget. We learned the importance of having a strong balanced budget with, with, with reserves uh, through this pandemic. And we will make sure we do that again this year. The pandemic has uh, exposed several weaknesses in Indiana's infrastructure, uh, from a lack of investment in public health to the devastating neglect of public school funding. So this year, lawmakers will have to craft a new two-year state budget, including that issue of school funding. There's also a bill that could limit some of the governor's emergency powers. We're also expected to hear more about liability protections for businesses concerned about lawsuits related to COVID-19. And another issue that could have an impact on the budget, a proposed cigarette tax, all in the mix at the State House this year. Coming up next this Sunday in Focus, what's next for Vice President Mike Pence after everything that happened this past week? We'll talk about that with our panel, plus the latest on the coronavirus pandemic here in Indiana from the vaccines to the plans to keep Hoosiers safe when March Madness comes to town. Stick around.